Hey guys, we are going to be looking at input devices, but specifically input devices for physically challenged users. What does that mean? Well, basically users that have mobility issues or eyesight issues or hearing issues or any sort of other physical disability that might provide a challenge to them when working with technology. So we're going to look at various devices that are used to help people overcome these challenges. So let's get started. Here we have the joystick. Now the joystick is actually a very, very powerful little device. Although a lot of you might know it from the gaming, okay, and you use it for controlling things and flight simulators and all the rest. The joystick is actually very, very powerful in terms of controlling mobile devices, okay? Not mobile as in um, uh, a phone, mobile as in a wheelchair, okay? So people will have motorized wheelchairs and the joystick can actually then control the wheelchair, tell it where to go, which is actually pretty cool. So there's your first one. The trackball is another device, uh, very well used for people who have trouble with their uh, fingers and their hands and wrists, okay? So if they have issues where maybe it's arthritis or things that they, they are not as mobile or flexible with their hands, then the trackball is actually a very easy tool to use for manipulating the position of a mouse on a screen. So if they can kind of use their palm with their hand or even their arm over the ball and it then moves the mouse around on the screen. There on the left hand side you can see there is one. Uh, it's like a handheld ball with a little clicker in it so it's a, d a different kind of mouse actually very very cool this one is very cool this is an eye tracker eye tracking hardware and software are very very popular especially with people who are unable to use their arms and legs or they cannot use their heads or, the, or any, any other part of their body to type or communicate with and so they use their eyes to type and to perform instructions and commands that a computer can then calculate and, and work out. For example, have a look underneath down there, okay? There you can see that thing, it looks like a pen at first glance, but actually it's a bar. It's a special bar that sits on top of a computer or a laptop, okay? And it actually then scans and tracks your eye movements. So you can use your eyes to control the mouse on the screen. It is absolutely amazing. Here's an example. You can see we have an eye tracker. An eye tracker consists of cameras, illuminators, and algorithms. The illuminators create a pattern of near-infrared light on the eyes. The cameras take images of the user's eyes and the patterns. The image processing algorithms find specific details in the user's eyes and reflections patterns. Based on these details, mathematical algorithms calculate the eye's position and gaze point, for an instance, on a computer monitor. Now, you may have heard of these. This is called an SNP device or sip and puff. Sip as in and puff as in blowing out. Now, what does it actually do? A sip and puff device is something that is controlled by means of air or pressure. And here on the left hand side you can see there is a wheelchair and there at the top there near the, the, the where the head and mouth would be is the sip and, and puff controller. And a user would take the straw or the device into their mouth and depending on if they're blowing or if they're breathing in on the straw it would then control the wheelchair. Some of them are also detecting, they detect bites and pressure and depending on how hard or soft you blow it also has different actions. So that is a sip and puff device, often used for people who have mobility issues, quadriplegics for example, who are paralyzed from the neck down. Here you can see on the right hand side, that is Hilary Lister. She was a quadriplegic and she decided that she was going to sail the Indian Ocean. And that's what she did in a special, uh, specially designed boat with everything that was me mechanical and digitized with it. And she had everything on her. She controlled this entire thing with just her mouth. And that is unbelievable. Unfortunately, she passed away a few years ago, but she had set some records in some amazing ability traveling across the, the Indian Ocean and traveling. She actually um, navigated around the UK all on her own. Uh, just using sip and puff devices to power the boat and control it and steer it.
Of course, nobody would be anywhere without the good old microphone. Okay, so here you can see we've got a couple of things here like an intelligent voice translator. A lot of software and hardware working together these days to take what you are saying and convert it into either translating into another language or into instructions for a computer to follow. So headset microphones, there's a cool one, one that kind of goes around the back of your neck and just sits in front. That's pretty cool. I've never had that. I would love one of those. Okay, but a microphone, very simple device, everybody uses it, great for people with disabilities. For those who are, um, d have difficulty with their eyesight, okay, they might be blind or, or partially blind or have really bad eyesight and they're using braille for reading and, and, and things, you actually get braille keyboards. I didn't even know this. Like, I mean, I knew about it, but I'd, I'd never actually seen one in real life. And so there you can see there's a close-up of some of the keys on a Braille keyboard. Super cool, guys. So even if people are blind, they can still use a computer. There's nothing stopping them from using a computer like anybody else. There's lots of software available. There you can see above me is a uh, special device connected to a laptop via an app. And that also then prints out and brings up keys and, and notes and letters and stuff. It's, it's amazing how this stuff works. But even Braille keyboards, fantastic stuff we're using for blind people. For those who are unable to use their arms, but they have full capacity and movement of full facility, capacity, full facility of their, their neck and their head, a mouth stick or a stylus for the mouth is what people would use. And you might actually see these if you look around. You'll see people who are uh, who battle using their arms and their hands. The, they can actually use their mouth and have a special stick or a stylus that they just hold in their mouth and they can use that to then tap on touch screens and navigate and edit things like that. Here's a new one that I would never seen before, and this is actually really cool. These are smart shoulder pads. So you're wondering like, what the heck does that do? Well, the shoulder pads, this is for people who had um, specific kinds of um, disabilities, physical disabilities, and it's helping to rehabilitate their muscles and, and all that stuff. I don't know, it's all doctor stuff, okay? So, but this thing goes on top of the shoulders. You can see there's a sensor um, under the bum as well. And there's a game that gets played. And as the person plays this game and tries to then manipulate things on the computer screen, they have to move their shoulders in a particular way. And this actually then aids the healing of the body. So that's another very, very fantastic design.